of the books that marked me as a young person was Voltaire's Candide and the character in Candide of Pangloss, who used to teach his protege um, that we live in the best of all possible worlds. Now, there's no doubt that uh, the very, very few who control the fates of everyone out there would love us to believe that Pangloss is right. And that yes, this, work, this world sucks, it has lots of problems, but it is the best of all possible worlds. Every ruling class wants us to believe that Pangloss was right. I do think the kind of um, economies that we've built, where the bulk of the GDP is in financial assets, uh, where uh, people just sit in London and New York um, and basically transport money across the world into stock markets, into um, bond markets, um, make huge returns and take it back. I, I don't think that is a sustainable um, model long term. It would make a few people very rich, but I don't think it's sustainable because it continues to um, extract wealth at the expense of the vast majority of the, of the, of the world's population. But I want to emphasize that it's not just not the best system, it's also the worst system from the point of view of the survival of the species. I don't want to sound over dramatic, but I think that's absolutely true. We have immense existing inequalities that are bound to create even more social and political tensions that create very, very unstable societies. This is not a recipe for a future. There are many other alternatives, cooperative ventures of various sorts and uh, in, actually involving people in the systems in which they work, getting the people who do the work to have some say in the decisions. But the, the, uh, as it stands, the uh, system uh, won't survive if it tries to keep um, getting back to normal because normal had become abnormal and a normal left too many people out of the game. We had the time between 45 and 90 was the competition between communism and Western market economies, the coming decades will be the competition between state capitalism and a more social market economy model. And it's the more complicated challenge because the state capitalist system is the more successful one, is the better competitor. Um, based on my own values, uh, which I, I would claim are kind of traditional American values of, of freedom and liberty, I think capitalism is, in an Aristotelian sense, the best economic system because it does the most good uh, with the least harm. It's not to say that it, it, it is occurring with no harm at all, uh, but compared to the other systems that we have, uh, I think it's, it's better. Yes, I think it is. Private ownership, competition, market economies governed by good laws which are implemented and executed make for innovation, they make for efficiency, and they make for diversity. And I think those, this is the way that we can help people to realize their aspirations and, and have opportunities and societies to provide the goods that people want and need. There's a whole ecosystem of people uh, that you rely on, that their trust and, and support you, you seek and require. And so, so I think that um, uh, the, whatever capitalism that, uh, uh, that you want emerges, it's one that um, is able to secure a more stable um, and more productive forms of collaboration. The system in which you basically use your, the power of the state to do one thing mainly, which is to break any dangerous concentration of power and control at home, or any dangerous concentration of power and control abroad, and then to stop, and then to let the people thus made free live their own lives and make their own goods and have their own thoughts and deliberate as a community of independent individuals, equal individuals. Uh, if we can rebuild that kind of political and economic democracy, 
And that's what we're, and we're, we can save this world. I think we could imagine another one. Um, and I think not only can we, but I think we should and we need to imagine another one. Um, another economic, but also another democratic system designed with another set of incentives other than profit and efficiency and productivity and short-termism and re-election. Um, I think that we have plenty of sources of inspiration actually to look at in different pockets of the world um, where we see economic democracy is thriving. If we take the premise that the brain is par uh, sort of paramount to how we operate in the world and how we interact with the world, how we make decisions, etc., can we think about a form of stakeholder capitalism which focuses on brain issues? So can we, when we develop products and services, can we assess these products and services in a way, what are they doing good for the brain? Let's optimize what they're doing that's good for the brain. And how can we mitigate what's bad for the brain?